Disclaimer. This video contains spoilers from books 9 through 15. This is an AU, meaning alternate universe. This is not how the actual story of Wings of Fire goes, so don't take it like it is. Thanks. Enjoy the video. Hi, I'm Aspen. Except that's not who this OC is. So, who is she? A while ago, I decided that Aspen has like zero actual lore. So I made a new OC, which is the dragon you are seeing right now. This is Juniper, Aspen's younger sister. She's really sweet, kind, scared of everything, but she's a really good fighter at the same time. I'm not going to spoil too much of the video, so let's get into it. Uh, I did two speed paints for you guys, and there is a lot of lore, so have fun with that. Aspen and Juniper were sisters who grew up separately, but it didn't always used to be like that. Juniper was always the sweet, soft, and caring one who would faint at the sight of a singular drop of blood, while Aspen was the one who would attack anything that moved. They were both born in the Sapling Village, but their father came from the Poison Wing Village. He tended to be a lot more tough and loud. Juniper and Mother were scared of him, and Aspen could never really figure out why or how the two even got married and had eggs in the first place. Eventually, when Aspen was three and Juniper was two, the sister's parents split up, and they each chose one child to keep with them. Juniper had hoped that father would pick Aspen since she was never scared. In her eyes, Aspen was a great fighter. She couldn't be further from the truth. But Aspen hoped that father would pick Juniper so that maybe Juniper could finally learn to stop being scared of literally everything. And fine, maybe Aspen was somewhat scared of her father as well, but she would never let anybody know that. Then came the day that father would leave. The day that he would choose either Aspen or Juniper. But instead of that, Mother decided to take both the sisters and run away from Father. She ran away from the saplings and the poison wings. She reached the ocean, where they literally couldn't go anywhere anymore. It was about a month on the beach before the rainy season started. And it wasn't easy for a leafwing to leave, live on the beach in the first place. But after rainy season, it was terrible. There was limited food, the water wasn't good to drink, and there was zero shelter from any of the storms. Even in these conditions, they stayed on the beach for about five more days. Then the worst happened. While Aspen and Juniper were out hunting, a bolt of lightning struck a tree. The same tree that their mother was sitting under. She was way too weak to move and noticed the falling tree way too late. And she was crushed to death. The sisters didn't find out right away. They thought that Mother had gone into the forest for shelter, but that wasn't the case at all. It was Juniper who found her mother first. She was just cleaning up some branches blown about from the storms when she came to a large tree trunk and immediately knew she wouldn't be able to lift it on her own. She was just about to call for Aspen when she spotted sage green scales under a trunk. Upon closer inspection, Juniper realized that it was, in fact, her mother. Aspen was hunting on the other side of the beach when she heard Juniper shriek. She dropped a fish in her mouth right as she heard all of the trees whisper in alarm. Something was wrong. The trees barely made any sounds, ever. Almost at the same time, the sisters decided that they needed to look for each other, so they started running towards each other. They crashed into each other, and Juniper was the first one up, shouting what sounded like a jumbled up mess of words and crying. Juni, calm down, calm down. Aspen, haven't you heard a single word I just said? Juniper cried. She was soaking with tears, shaking tremendously, and not a single thought made any sense whatsoever. Mother is dead, Aspen. She paused to go bare. It felt like she wasn't breathing. And maybe she wasn't. It was hard to tell at this point. What? Aspen said. Even she could start to feel tears tugging at her eyes. Mother couldn't be dead. It, it just... Nope, not possible. Aspen. Shh, it's okay. You're okay. You're alive. We'll be fine. But, Juniper started. No, we're fine. Aspen! Juniper shouted, startling Aspen just a little bit. Let me talk, she said in between sobs. We're not fine. We have nobody to protect us, and we have no shelter. The speech is stupid, there's barely any food, and I'm tired of drinking disgusting seawater. They were both silent for a moment. What do you want to do then? Aspen asked Juniper. I want to go home. 
I hate father, but we're not ready to be on our own yet. We need somebody. Okay, Aspen replied. We'll do that. Three years. Three years since her mother died. Three years since Aspen moved back into the sapling village. Three years since she last saw Juniper, her younger sister. Today would have been her sixth hatching day. Maybe Aspen could sneak out to meet her, except, no, that would never work. Juniper wouldn't know where to meet her. Heck, she wouldn't even know that Aspen's trying to see her again. Also, Aunt Pine would absolutely notice that she's missing. Her leaf speak is way stronger than Aspen's. Plus, literally all the plants love her. And they're such snitches. You can't get away with anything without those dumb plants reporting it to her. Just as Aspen finished that thought, Pine walked into her greenhouse, where Aspen was hiding from her. She was a large dragon, and an elegant one too. She had dark green scales with light reddish pink and tealish accents. She had no accessories except for a singular gold stud in the leafy membrane at the tip of her tail. They're not snitches, Aspen, Pine said, which was stupid because the plants probably heard Aspen talking about it in her head and reported that to Pine. Snitches. Also, I thought I told you to stop talking about her. She said her as if she saw some hive wing up another tree and turn it into more of their tree gunk for their hives. Okay, I'll just forget about my younger sister that you and father forced me to abandon right after mother died simply so that you have something to complain about ever. Aspen snapped back, which earned a great look from Pine that she wished she could capture forever. But alas, that couldn't be done. Sadly. Excuse me? Pine asked. Go to your room. This instant. Ugh, Aspen groaned. Why? She asked, making sure to use her whiniest voice in hopes that P Pine would force her to go hunt for dinner, so that maybe she could sneak out to see the Poison Wing Village and maybe finally see Juniper again. Not happening, Pine said. You are so grounded. Snitches, Aspen thought of the plants, and maybe she was going insane. But she was pretty sure some of the plants did exactly what was equivalent to a dragon looking offended and stepping back. Huh. Maybe I can control some plants with my leaf speak after all. Today is the day that Juniper turned six. There was only one thing wrong with that, though. Aspen wasn't here to celebrate it with her for the third year in a row. It seemed as if that's the only thing that Juniper thinks about now. Aspen's absence. She ignored it as best she could for the first year, not so well the second year, and, well, not at all very well in year three so far. Is it even possible to miss someone that much? Stop thinking about her, Juniper thought to herself. Father will be home any minute now to start torturing me. Okay, fine. It wasn't necessarily torture, per se, but it was extremely physically taxing battle practice, as Father liked to call it. Juniper could probably take down, like, 20 hive wings on her own if she had to. Okay, fine. Maybe only, like, one. But that was still any at all. Just then, her father walked in. Happy hatching day. It did not sound at all like he meant it, just like the other two years he'd said it. Aspen would actually mean it, Juniper thought. Thanks, she responded. Conversations between the two of them usually averaged under ten words and a whole lot of grunty sounds from father. Juniper watched as the vines crawled to cover the exit of the tree hollow, closing the two dragons into their nest. I have something, father said, which really surprised Juniper, because the last time he gave her a gift was like a billion years ago when he actually still loved his family. But really? Juniper asked, trying not to sound too delighted. Father handed her an item wrapped up with long leaves tied together with a red vine. Juniper pulled the vine off and unwrapped the leaves. There was a scrap of paper inside with scribbly handwriting that read, Juniper, if you are reading this letter, that means that you are living with your father in the Poison Wing Village. It has been a few years since you last saw your sister, and I know I can't keep you two separated forever. So here, I found a map. An old map. I suspect that it is from Clearsight's time, so treat it well. I made a copy for Aspen, and I just have to hope that Pine will actually give it to her. I am writing this all in a letter because I am probably dead. 
I wrote this when we were living on that beach, when I was very weak, when I can barely manage to write this for both you and your sister. Your father and I talked about this plan the day before we left. I told him three years after I leave you. That's when the Dragonettes will leave you too, and you can finally live whatever life you so desire. I know this is a lot of information, but please, go find yourself a better life, and I'm sorry I couldn't do that for you myself. Do not fail where I failed. Love, Mother. Wow, Juniper breathed, with tears in her eyes. You're really okay with this? I mean, yes, Father interrupted. Really? Juniper asked again, unable to hide her excitement this time. How could she hide it? She was finally going to see Aspen again, after all these years. And they were going on a mysterious quest from their mother. Go, he said. I mean it. I've... I haven't been great. I was almost never there for you, and to be honest, I never wanted eggs. I only wanted for your mother to be happy. But now she's gone, and so I want nothing to do with you. So go, leave this nest and find your sister for all I care, he said. Juniper wasn't sure if she should be shocked that her father said that many words in a conversation, or that he really never loved her, or anybody for that matter. Okay, thank you, father, Juniper said. Oh, and... She paused to look back at her father before permanently leaving this place. You suck, she shouted, leapt off the tree and soared right over the poison wing village and right into the sapling village where she spotted Aspen waiting for her in the middle of a clearing, never looking back even once. Aspen couldn't stop thinking about the letter that her mother left for her and Juniper and the fact that Aunt Pine actually gave it to her. She fiddled with one of her golden horn rings in the moonlight, hoping that this clearing would be easy enough for Juniper to find. Just as Aspen thought that thought, a dragon came flying right towards her and knocked Aspen right to the ground. Aspen's fight-or-flight reflexes kicked in right away, and they chose fight. Surprisingly, since that is not at all what Aspen is good at. She threw the mystery dragon off of her, which she immediately regretted because the mystery dragon turned out to be her sister, Juniper. Juniper? Aspen shouted. Oh my gosh, Junie, I am so sorry. Missed you too, Aspen. Juniper winced. I, I thought, you attacked me, you absolute acorn head. What were you thinking? Apparently I wasn't, because if I were you in that situation, I probably would have done the exact same thing, Juniper responded. But it was, oh, so great to finally hear her voice and, her, and see her scales again. She was a lot bigger this time, and less timid, it seemed. So... Are we going to go on that adventure or not? Juniper asked. I thought you'd never ask, Juniper responded, but then added, Well, actually, on second thought, you would probably absolutely ask, so how about I shut up and we go fly across the ocean? Wait, what? Juniper asked. Fly across the ocean? Yeah. Did you look at the map? Aspen asked, and Juniper stared at her with a blank face. At all? I thought those blobs, Juniper pointed to what was obviously an island on the map, not a blob, were lakes, she said. No, Junie, Aspen started. Your intelligence is beyond comparison, Aspen said in a flat, sarcastic voice. Glad to see you've barely changed in the past three years, Juniper said, then pointed to one of the leafy pouches strung across Aspen's body. Although, those are new. Well, I am just wonderful at fighting, so I probably wouldn't even need these patches of totally not deadly bugs and plants, Aspen said, sarcastically, again. Oh, well luckily, you have me now, and I am way more effective than an ant or two, Juniper said. And Aspen started laughing so hard, she almost fell over as Juniper just stared at her, concerned. You, a fighter? Aspen managed in between laughs. Now that I gotta see. You probably will, Juniper said. I spent the last three years in the Poison Wing Village after- Oh! Juniper managed as Aspen clapped her talon over her snout. Shh, she said, listening to the whispers in the trees. And just a second later, Aspen could see an odd greenish smoke rising from the jungle. Juniper yanked Aspen's talon off her snout. We have to go. Now, she said. 
No way was she going anywhere near that smoke. Why was it green? Was it Queen Wasp? Can Queen Wasp control the other Pantalon tribes now? Juniper didn't want to find out the answer to that question, but apparently Aspen did, because she was walking straight into the burning forest with creepy green smoke. Aspen, what are you doing? Juniper shouted. Um, investigating, Aspen responded, which was the most idiotic and stupid answer Juniper had ever heard in her entire life. Uh, how about no? Juniper asked, and Aspen looked at her like she just spoke monkey. Let's not go into the forest that is currently burning down. I would like to live, thank you very much. Fine, you scaredy scales, Aspen replied, and Juniper rolled her eyes. Where else are we going to go anyways? Aspen asked, which was slightly annoying because she did have a point. How about we go to the distant kingdoms? Juniper suggested. This time Aspen just stared at her and then started laughing really loudly again. What? shouted Juniper. The distant kingdoms? Really? Aspen asked. They're such just myths, nothing but legends, she said. Okay, Juniper said. Then how do you explain this? Juniper pulled out the map that their mother found for them. And this time, Aspen stayed quiet. Okay, fine. We'll follow the map, Aspen said, finally. The trip was long and painful. They were starving most of the time, and they almost never got a break from flying. Juniper got sick at one point, and Aspen had to carry her for a week, then fell unconscious from exhaustion. When they arrived, though, they were greeted by a silkwing named Luna and a sandwing named Draboa. But they were finally here. They made it to the distant kingdoms. Somehow, she was right. Juniper had saved them. That smoke, it was the breath of evil. Queen Wasp did find out how to control the leafwings and the silkwings. Juniper and Aspen had left Pantala just in time and arrived in Peria. The queens all sent one dragon from each tribe to go back over to Pantala to go fight the Breath of Evil. They did, and now the tribes are at peace, and Aspen even has a cool new accessory, even though Juniper thinks it's dumb. Aspen claims that the earring has Pyrian magic, and she knows it does, as a strange but somewhat safe feeling to it. After asking an Icewing from Possibility, whose name turned out to be Winter, about it, it turns out that his friend Turtle enchanted it to keep its wearer safe from any spell casted by this totally creepy sounding giant nightwing named Darkstalker. So there's that. Aspen and Juniper decided that they would rather stay on Peria and live with the Rainwings than go back to Pantala, as they didn't quite trust it yet. The Rainwings were a nice tribe anyway, and Tsunami even said that they might be able to join Jade Mountain Academy next year. Before that, though, they've decided that they're going to explore every inch of Peria together. Alright, hi! This was definitely a longer video than I usually post, but I just wanted to let you guys know that my school has just ended and my summer break has just started, and usually that would mean I might post more, but actually I am like super busy this summer, so I'm probably gonna post just as regularly, regularly as I do anyway. So, I'll just, literally tomorrow, I am going on a 10-day vacation, and then after that, I'm going on a one-week summer camp, and then after that, I'm going on a two-week vacation, and I may or may not have any time to post at all. So, sorry if I, like, just go dormant for a month and a half. Um, anyway, that's, I really hope you did enjoy Aspen and Juniper's backstory. Uh, and that's all for now. Yeah.